Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today for another part on my series on living with narcolepsy. Sorry about the hat, I know it's rude to wear it indoors, maybe a southern thing, I don't know. But with the uh, virus going around, I haven't had a proper haircut in months, so you get what you get right now. Today I wanted to talk about uh, some medicines that are, I'll say common, not so much common, but very important for the treatment of narcolepsy. Now the first one that uh, I've talked about here before is Xyrem. So Xyrem is a sodium oxabate of GHB, gamma hydroxybutyrate, and it's used for the treatment of narcolepsy. So it's indicated to improve symptoms of excessive sleepiness, as well as cataplexy, and many people also report it helps their other narcolepsy symptoms, such as sleep paralysis, uh, nightmares, things like that. Uh, if you want to hear more about Xyrem specifically, I've done a number of other videos about my experience with Xyrem, uh, and I'll make sure to link those below if you're here to find out about that. However, there's something that not many people know about um, that's becoming more common. So Xyrem is not the only medicine of this type anymore. There's another medicine. Both of these are manufactured by Jazz Pharmaceuticals. And this other medicine is Zywave. And I happened to switch over to Zywave here recently. So I just wanted to go over the process, which you get with the Zywave, the differences, yada, yada. So first of all, what's the difference? Zyrem is a sodium oxabate, and that means when it hits your stomach acid, the sodium is actually taken out of the molecule and replaced with an oxygen. I believe I got that correct. Uh, but the end result is you're flushing a lot of sodium into your system. In fact, the maximum dose of Xyrem ends up being like, I want to say like 80% of your daily sodium intake for a healthy person. So it's a lot of sodium. And for people who have issues that are on sodium restriction, a lot of them can't even take it because of how much it is, or they have to take a drastically reduced dose. So that's where Zywave comes in. So Zywave is the same active ingredient. It still becomes the same uh, GHB but it is made from, and I'm reading off the package here, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium oxabates. So it's greatly reduced the amount of sodium that you get in your bloodstream, and it does that by replacing some of that sodium with other salts. So calcium, magnesium, potassium. Obviously, these are other minerals that your body uses in different amounts, and by kind of spreading up the load, so to speak, you're not getting that huge amount of sodium. So Zywave is still indicated for narcolepsy. It uh, still targets excessive daily sleepiness and it works on cataplexy as well. They are undergoing trials. It's not approved yet, but they're undergoing trials for people with idiopathic hypersomnia, which is huge because uh, if it's approved, it would be the first treatment approved for idiopathic hypersomnia uh, by the FDA. You know, people with idiopathic hypersomnia, and uh, potentially I'm in that category, they're thinking I have type 2 narcolepsy, but there is a possibility it's hypersomnia instead. Uh, there's nothing on label to treat that. So while Xyrem has been shown in some third-party studies to have an effect on people with idiopathic hypersomnia, it's not approved, and therefore it's very, very difficult to get insurance or anything to approve it. And if you're not aware, the cash price of both of these drugs exceeds $10,000 a month. Uh, I think for a full dose, it's like twelve to 13000 a month. So there's just no way anybody's going to pay for it if it's not improved by insurance. So that's huge for people with hypersomnia, obviously. Now what you get in the package, you get this nice pink, purple, highly designed box. Obviously, they're, they're going for a whole aesthetic here. And inside, you get a couple things. Um, you actually have a QR code you can scan for a welcome video. And uh, I think that's actually kind of neat because when I started Xyrem, even though it's a pretty simple process, uh, knowing how serious this drug is, uh, it does have a black box warning. It can cause side effects up to and including death in rare cases. Um, and it can cause serious side effects if abused or taken with other drugs, including alcohol. 
on a whole, it, it's something that you want to take seriously. So uh, e even though it's pretty easy to dose, uh, I think that's still nice for people who are new. Then you get a welcome packet. Let's see what's in here. I haven't actually looked at this before. So this is safety information, uh, nurse and pharmacy support. You can call in and get uh, support if you have questions about the medicine. Uh, if you need to talk to a pharmacist about any of your other medications, which they're actually going to want you to do if you get prescribed new medicines, is to call them and make sure that it doesn't interact. Um, here's information about access and affordability. I will get into that because it's kind of a special case with Zywave. Um, then it, it looks like they now have a website called mywave.com. So they have an app that, uh, let's see here, automatically get access to specific information tailored to your treatment progress. The app can help you get started, manage your treatment and more. Helpful treatment information and tips. And I'm feeling something inside of here. What is this? And they put these... <laughs> everywhere in this package so this is the uh this is the prescription information and prescribing information and just in this box alone i've got like four of these and i think i've already gone through and pulled a couple of them out these are everywhere not a bad thing necessarily but uh it is a little much and then i, I don't know that i've ever used this but it does also come with a little digital clock and AAA batteries because the the way you take this well, that's interesting little lanyard for the clock the way you take this typically most people you will take two doses throughout the night so you will take one right when you're getting ready to go to bed in fact it's recommended you do everything before bed, brush your teeth, get into pajamas or whatever you do or don't wear to go to sleep, you get the air set correctly, uh, you know, turn off the lights, don't be watching TV, rest for a little bit to be ready to go to sleep, then take your Xyrem slash Zywave, turn the lights off and immediately roll over and try to go to sleep. That's the, the way you get the most out of this medicine. And then two and a half to four hours later, you'll wake up and you'll take a second dose because it's only uh, typical for it to last about four hours. So obviously you wanna get eight hours of good controlled restful sleep, which is what Xyrem and Zywave do for you, is they actually put you in a stage where you're getting controlled, regulated, rested sleep. And that's why this is the only medicine on the market today that actually treats narcolepsy symptoms by going to the root of the problem. You know, you have uh, you have your stimulants, modafinil, Adderall, dexamphetamine, Ritalin, Concerta, Vyvanse, methamphetamine. Uh, you, you have all these stimulants and they help you stay awake. And that's especially great for people who are prone to micro sleeping or falling asleep without control. That's great, don't get me wrong. If, if you need that, if you live by those, awesome that they help you but they don't actually fix the problem. And in fact, in, in some cases, they can kind of cause a negative cycle where uh, you're not only not getting restful sleep, but when your body's trying to force you into sleep, now you're powering through it. And if you're not getting that restful sleep, you can actually be enhancing your sleep debt in a way. You have wake ics and Sinose, those help you stay awake through non-stimulant wakefulness promoting actions working on the histamine and dopamine and norepinephrine in the brain. Again, same thing. They help, and in fact, they can even help with cataplexy, but they don't actually treat the root of the problem. Zyrem and Zywave do, while they can't address the brain damage that is thought to cause narcolepsy, or perhaps the chemical imbalance that they think might cause idiopathic hypersomnia, what they do is address the lack of restorative sleep. So this is the only one that actually puts your body ahead a step and helps you recover in that way. Now also you'll get your bottles. 
making sure I'm not showing any personal information here. So this is Zyrem. It's a tall bottle. It's thin. So, I mean, you can see how thin it is. This is Zywave. So it it's a little more color coded. It's a round bottle. It's a little bit shorter. I'm sure that this is done for easy visual identification because uh, you always want to be able to recognize medicine, obviously. And then of course you get your syringe. You'll get this in every shipment and your dosing cup. So what you do, you stick your syringe in the bottle, you draw out whatever your dose is, typically between two and 4.5 grams, and then you squirt it in the cup and it's only gonna go up about that much and then you dilute it with water. And that's honestly, as far as I can tell, to make it uh, palatable and even safe to drink because I do believe these are incredibly basic solutions. Uh, you really don't wanna take them non-diluted. So you fill it up, uh, they say 60 milliliters of water. Uh, the amount of water is not actually super important. They want you to take enough that it dilutes it, but not so much that you have to go to the bathroom because some people won't wake up on the dose and bedwetting is a rare but noted complication of Zyrem and Zywave. All right, let's talk about taste. Uh, so Zyrem is super salty. It's like drinking slightly sticky seawater. Uh, when I was five, I had a, a part of my jaw cut out that had a tumor, and I had to rinse daily with this really strong saline solution. Zyrem tastes almost identical to that, except instead of swishing and spitting it out, you have to swallow it. I hated it at first, but once your brain gets used to it, um, it, it, it tastes like good sleep, if that makes sense. Your brain's like, oh yes, this is the sleep juice, now I get to go and have good sleep, so you get used to it. Some people flavor it with stuff. If you're gonna do that, make sure it's non-caffeinated and has no sugar in it and no calories. And I also recommend something that's not a citric acid or acidic based because uh, the Zyrem and Zywave actually rely on the acid in your stomach to start that chemical process that turns the oxibate into the primary form of GHB. And it's my non-scientific opinion that you really wouldn't want to mess with that process by mixing it with acid. Zywave is a little different. Zywave I've heard described as rancid diet soda, uh, stale blue Powerade, um, sour spoiled sweet tea. I, I won't go that far with it, but I will say after a year of being on Zyrem and taking the Zyrem, you know, half asleep and it's salty and you're finally used to it. The first big sip I took of Zywave was a shock. <laughs> and I almost spat it back out just because it was a shock. It's not as horrible in my opinion as some people say. It is super sweet and it's an artificial sweet. So I definitely understand where they're coming from with the diet soda part of it. It does seem to have this little bit of flavor that's almost fruity or berry so again the the blue powerade um, i can see that but it is sweet to a point it's almost like sickly and i'm not even on the full 4.5 uh, last night i took 3.25 so i didn't even get the most intense form of it like i said it's really not horrible but it's pretty strong and there's one taste above it all and i think this is where the rancid comes from that's like, it's medicinal and it's sticky and it kind of coats your mouth and it's a little bit chalky. It almost reminds me of a cough syrup or some of the coated pills that you might take. So yeah, it's like drinking flat diet soda flavored with some weird other stuff that's also got this medicine taste in it. It's not great, but not awful. Now, as far as the process for switching from Zyrem to Zywave, First of all, obviously your doctor needs to write a new prescription and send it to um, ESSDS, that's the either them or Jazz. So Jazz is the manufacturer and then ESSDS is the fulfillment pharmacy. They do that and then you're going to have to go through insurance. And this is where it gets a little difficult right now is Zywave is not really on any formularies right now as far as I've heard. They love to deny it because Zyrem already exists and it's hard to get indicated for Zywave. They will use anything that's abnormal in your testing that's even the slightest bit outside of narcolepsy boundaries to say that it's not medically necessary. 
Um, I speak from experience. And all that good stuff. So it is difficult. Again, remember, this is going to cost your insurance company like 125000 a year. So if they cannot pay that, they're going to try. Just my opinion, not to editorialize too much. It's just how it is. Where I'm at right now, I actually had a valid Zyrum prescription and I was approved under the patient assistance program. So when switching to Zywave, they put in the new prescription for me and then I was able to get a voucher. So when switching from Zy Zyrem to Zywave, they will offer you a one time per life. So one person gets one of them per life uh, voucher for one month of medicine and uh, that, that becomes immediate. Then they send it off to insurance. While insurance does their thing, you can continue to get what they call bridge shipments. So these bridge shipments are 30 days at a time for a maximum of 120. And I'm just repeating what, what they told me when I was on the phone with them a couple days ago. And as your insurance decides whether or not to cover it, you can apply for these bridge shipments one at a time because they want you to have continuity of treatment. Your insurance, if they deny it, they will want to appeal it twice. So they want a denial primary and then they want to appeal denials. After that, you can then apply for the patient assistance program. This is income based. You send in your information and based on your income, they decide whether or not uh, they can provide it to you. For me, it's been at no cost. I've never met anybody else who had to pay anything for the patient assistance. Um, I should note this is for private insurance, people who have state insurance, um, anything provided by the government. Um, I have heard, and they did tell me on the phone, if you have that insurance, you won't be able to apply for patient assistance, which is unfortunate, but it is how it is. Anyways, that patient assistance is good for a year. So every year they want you to resubmit to insurance and try to get it approved because obviously once you've been on it, they can make a stronger case that the insurance should cover it. And they're going to want to do that because they want to get paid. Uh, now, I'm sure they use the patient assistance as a tax write-off program or something like that, but getting paid obviously is still their goal because they're a multi-billion dollar for-profit corporation and that's what they're there for. They're there to make money off narcolepsy patients. If you're just starting Zywave, you'll have to go through the same process, except uh, I'm not sure if the voucher will apply to you. What I do know is you'll have to go through the insurance process and, if necessary, the patient assistance program before you'll receive your medicine. So for me, the first time around that I was taking Zyrim, this took like four and a half months of fighting insurance. And then uh, once I met the criteria, they sent me the paperwork for the patient assistance program. I sent it back in the next day and I was approved in like 48 hours. So if you end up in this case, hang in there. Keep constant communication with your doctor and uh, with the staff and make sure you stay on top of your insurance because they typically have 30 days for each decision. And what mine did to me, not with Zyrum, but Waykix, is they would send back denials that weren't denials. They would say, we're denying this because we're requesting documentation, even though it was documentation it already had. That doesn't count as a denial. So that's running up the clock still. And if you're relying on bridge shipments, you get enough of those that you should have time for the maximum amount of time for the initial decision in both appeals and then some extra time. But if you end up in one of those situations, make sure you're staying on top of the insurance and staying in touch with them to make sure that they're responding in due time so that you can get through the patient assistance program before you run out of the bridge shipments. And uh, in, in terms of Zywave itself versus Zyrum, I don't have much to say about it. It's the same active ingredient. Uh, this is my first day after taking it last night. We'll see if there's anything different long term. But to me, it feels exactly the same. It tastes a little different, but it comes on the same way. I slept pretty much the same way. So it, it feels like it's the same thing to me. Some people have reported that their doses have to be adjusted up or down compared to Zyrum. And, uh, you know, with these medicines, there's a range of effective doses for people. 
and th there may be some titration. You may have side effects for a little while, especially during titration, but some people have even reported it when they switch from one to the other. So there may be times you have to drop the dose or you have to stay at a dose and let those side effects go away before you can bring that dose back up. It's, uh, it's a very long and involved process with this drug. For people that it works for, even sometimes it can take, uh, I think the average reported time before improvement was like three months. And before people reached a plateau where they got the best they could be in state at maintenance, some people it takes over a year. And uh, you just have to keep trying with this. It's my opinion that if it works for you and it's safe for you to take, this is a drug that everybody with narcolepsy needs to consider being on because, like I said earlier, it's the only one that actually treats the deficiencies that you're experiencing and helps you have a, a more healthy state to operate from. So that's it for now. I might try to do something a little later on, a follow-up or whatever after I've been on it for a while. I did the same thing with the Zyrim. If you have any questions, 100% please, uh, in the comments, leave them below. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a scientist. I will try to help you with whatever questions you have. Uh, I do like to consider myself pretty well read on the, the topic, so I know where to find a lot of the information that people may be looking for, and I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Of course, the caveat being, once again, I'm not a doctor, and hopefully you have a medical professional who's prescribing this, who you trust and is experienced enough to help you out with those. Uh, another thing you might want to consider if you're on Facebook, I'm very active in a group called the Narcolepsy Support Group. Uh, there's like 20,000 plus members, not just U.S., but all over the world. So for me, that's been a great source of information. Again, that's a support group, not a group full of medical professionals. So with any group like that, uh, understand where the advice is coming from and give it the, the due weight that it has. But in, in my opinion, it is hugely beneficial to have such a large group of people struggling with not only narcolepsy, but similar comorbid disorders that you can draw from their experiences and learn from them. And uh, everybody helps each other out with that kind of thing. So like I said, questions about this, please feel free to leave a comment. I do have other videos about living with narcolepsy. I will link those. Uh, I'll probably just link the whole playlist. If you wanna stay subscribed to the channel, that's great. I love it, I absolutely support it. Just know narcolepsy is not the only main focus of this channel. There are other things that might not apply to you that might not excite you or uh, you may not wanna see on your newsfeed. I do a lot of gaming stuff and fiction and things like that. So if you're not into staying subscribed for those reasons, totally support that as well. And uh, just remember, you can come back and check out the Living with Narcolepsy playlist at any time and see if I've made any updates to that. So if you made it this far, I assume you're starting this medicine or looking at starting it or close to somebody who is. So thank you for giving me your time to go over this and explain what I know and I've experienced with it. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. It does feel good to, to share what I know and just get things off my chest sometimes as it comes to venting and talking about treatment. But uh, it's been a pleasure. Be well, everybody. Hope you find something that works for you, that helps you feel rested, feel energized, and feel good to take on your life. Thank you.